Hey everyone, and thus ends four years of President Trump, and Her Majesty the Queen's presumably looking forward to meeting her 13th president. 13 unlucky for some, especially if you live in Syria, where the last four years I guess have been somewhat of a reprieve from the Obama-Biden era. President Trump, though, you know, what I found strange and astonishing is that many people I know in remote parts of the UK have seemingly spent the past four years obsessing over more than their job or their children, despite President Trump having about as much impact in their day-to-day -day life in Britain as my choice of breakfast cereal today. You know, it's like a religion for some, I guess, so the Trump thing, I mean, as to breakfast breakfast, add two slices of pizza and a glass of wine because hey it's a weekend and I don't think special K is special enough sometimes. While we're on the subject of breakfast, hey here's a one. What do the military have for breakfast? Conflicts. What does Covid have for breakfast? Coffee. What do scientists eat for breakfast? Special potassium. And what do programmers eat for breakfast? Just a bite. Back to the subject though. Even in the US itself, the president rarely actually impacts that many people's lives. But it's always fun to challenge people who hate President Trump to name some policies that actually cause them to dislike him so much. They might mention that cages thing in the Mexican border, but that was all an Obama era policy that Joe Biden actually oversaw. A lot of the things that went on in the past four years only became bad because it was President Trump doing them. I guess they might mention the COVID response thing, which can challenge him to what world leader did it better. Their beloved Europe has been about as utterly useless as a cricket bat made out of glass, albeit at least the cricket bat would be transparent. If they need some hints as to good government to copy a COVID strategy from, maybe you can help them. You know, leaving Sweden's approach of doing nothing aside, Israel has been the one country that went down the distance and vaccine route pretty well, and is presumably one to copy if you think that's how things should be done. You know, it's great telling lefties that they should urge their government to emulate Israel more, and that the Israeli state is now a beacon for hope in the world. Anyway, I'll go for a list of Trump's achievements in a minute, but for now, this week saw President Biden's inauguration. It seems it will go down in history as televised. I didn't watch it myself, frankly, nor did I watch that royal wedding a couple of years back, mostly because they're both long and dull. Actually, I did see a bit of the inauguration when I was flicking through the channels, and the scrolling news thing at the bottom said that he was on his way to Arlington National Cemetery, and I thought, wow, he didn't last long. As to what lays in store for the next four years, it's worth noting that the expression President Joe Biden is an anagram of join indebted spree. You know, there's a good reason why Bitcoin has tripled since the election, and we're probably going to see the slow collapse of the dollar as Biden's friends run up trillion dollar deficits and everybody scrambles for the exit doors as the economic endgame rears its head. And yet on day one, a priority of his was to pass an executive order saying that schools have to allow boys to compete in girls' sports and use the women's changing room if they like because of feelings. You wouldn't want to get anyone's feelings hurt, would you, after all? Although maybe it's just part of a plan to get more lazy boys to get active, you know, if they're allowed to use the girls' showers afterwards. Anyway, here's that list, I promise you, of things that Trump did in the past four years. Number one, thanks to deregulation, the US became a net export of oil for the first time ever. The US is finally energy independent, something that nobody was able to do ever since Jimmy Carter promised it 40 years ago. Number two, no new wars, mostly because of that oil policy change thing, I guess. It will be hilarious in 30 years, though, to mention how whichever president at the time is the first president since Donald Trump to not start a war. Trump's going to be literally winding up people for decades to come with that one in the history books. Number three, forcing hospitals to provide medical prices to patients up front so they can shop around before getting the bill. Number four, in order that foreign drug prices are publicly known and the Medicare system isn't allowed to sign contracts where they pay more than that. It's going to save the US $85 billion. Number five, forcing NATO members to increase their spending by $400 billion rather than relying on the US to do everything as the world's policeman. Number six, he got rid of NAFTA. Number seven, he got more minority votes than any Republican in 100 years, showing that the party is far from dying due to demographic changes, so many people like to point out. Number eight, he doubled the child tax credit. Number nine, he also eliminated the Obamacare penalty, saving people thousands of dollars a year. Number 10, he instituted a Buy American policy within the federal government to stop the government from buying from overseas companies when there's domestic ones available. Number 11, the right to try, which essentially means that if you're terminally ill, you can legally buy potentially life-saving but as of yet unregulated medicines. Number 12, he withdrew from the nuclear deal in Iran. Number 13, he made the Arab world formally recognise the state of Israel, as something presidents tried for decades and failed to do. Number 14, he withdrew from the Paris Climate Accord, thus keeping America safe from that wishy hopey nonsense. And Biden, of course, will sign back up to it, but of course he'll never be able to actually enforce it now that number 15, the Supreme Court, is stacked against him, and it will be for at least a decade. You know, it's all well and good signing a climate treaty, but how's he supposed to actually do anything to meet the aims of it? Banning people from buying heating oil or forcing air passengers to take part in a rationing system? Well, to quote Mr. Trump, I'll see you in court. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.